In today's episode, I've got Cheng Jewel, who is working on a video documentary of the Yang 2020 campaign. But first, Hello, nerds. Ni hao, nerds. Ni hao, nerds. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's the first time we've had a Mandarin hello nerds. I love it, Cheng Jewel. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much, Tom. It's wonderful just seeing you here. Oh, it's a, it's a pleasure. I know you've been making content about Yang uh, for a long time now, and I saw on Twitter that you're uh, working on a, a documentary. Um, so I, I'd love to dig into that. But before we get into it, maybe just a quick introduction to, to who you are, and then we'll, we'll dive into the documentary stuff. Oh, okay. Who am I? Um, I originally, um, I was born in Shanghai, China. Mm -hmm. uh, I came to this country uh, about 35 years ago to pursue my musical career. I'm a, a serious uh, musician, violist. Apparently, I'm not very serious right now, so I haven't been practicing <laughs> much. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, my background is music. Um, uh, I play the viola and I taught in college in music and schools and different uh, I still teach at home on my studio, uh, but uh, about, I would say, 15 years ago, I was more serious about film and making, you know, before it was just making videos. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I learned how to do editing. I went to uh, NYU, uh, studied a, peer, a short period of time. And so that kind of puts me in the track of uh, learning how to, you know, tell stories, how to edit, how to do this and that, all the, the, the whole spiel. So I've been making lots of videos. I made about 600 videos on YouTube and uh, followed Angie Yan. I probably made about over 100 short uh, documentaries about NGN. Oh my God. So tell me, like, when did you first uh, discover this guy? What was your Yang story? <laughs> yeah, it, it was like a kind of a, not a, a very formal way of introduction. Uh, I have a very close friend from college. Uh, she went to Shanghai Conservatory. We both did. So she lives in Boston. So she said, I'm coming to New York uh, to attend May 14th, uh, 2019. Uh, Andrew Yen rally. So I said, Oh, you're coming. Uh, okay, you come, you're going, I'm going to, you know, that's mm. it. So I went. Uh, she eventually did not make it to New York for whatever reason. Uh, I went anyway, uh, <laughs> with my gears, um, mm -hmm. skin, you know, I shot pretty much everything on my iPhone. So I, I went with my skinny iPhone tripod, and people kind of didn't take me seriously and they wouldn't let me go onto a platform even mm -hmm. if I, I had a uh, uh, I had a uh, press pass I'm a New York City police um, you know a press pass I have so anyway so I just I, I still shot I went to very very front row and had a ex first exposure of Andrew Yen yeah so the, the rest of is history yeah what was your first impression did you did you watch him before the event, or was that event the first time you actually saw him say anything? Yeah, maybe I saw him a little bit. Um, you know, we have a like a similar platform Chinese use called WeChat. Mm -hmm. You probably use it too. So I saw maybe a little bit on WeChat about Andrea, but I didn't really. Uh, I was never politically that sensitive. I never donated to anyone. I never really, you know, did much volunteer work for anybody. So I went, it was more curious uh, from from capturing event point of view. Mm -hmm. I went, I didn't know. So my my first impression, I had no really impression at all because I don't know who Andrew Yang was, but I was very impressed by the people. People moved me. There's so, so many people, a lot of people. <laughs> Young and old, you know, brown, black, you know, mm -hmm. Indian, or all, all colors, um, you know, Latinos, and um, 
and white, you know, uh, you would think you know, the whole rally would be all Asian people, right? Right. No, it's, it's all different <laughs> colors. So, so uh, yeah, I made a really nice, uh, nice little uh, my first short documentary about the event yeah, and met some amazing people. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, of course, there's there's a, a strong contingent of Asian Americans who backed Yang. Uh, I was surprised that it wasn't bigger. I think he lost uh, in the primaries the majority of Asian American support to uh, Biden. And even there was some Asian American support going to like Buttigieg and Warren instead mm -hmm. of Yang. Um, so he wasn't like a no brainer for, for many Asian Americans. Yeah. Um, what, what was your thoughts, uh, after that event? Were you like, oh, okay, that was done. I'm good. Or were you thinking, oh, I need to just follow the whole story from beginning to end? Um, I don't remember, uh, how I really thought after that, but I just know, uh, people, there's like a, in New York, there's a lot of uh, already early young men. They're much young, earlier mm -hmm. than me. They're like my teachers. I have uh, Kathy Huang uh, keep telling me different events, so mm. she, they want me to go shoot. So at, at so for about a month, I went to shoot just because people want me to go. Right. And then uh, and then after a while. I'll, I'll just start to look for things to do. Like I, there is a great site. We have a great uh, Facebook uh, NYC young guy. They mm -hmm. always put post stuff to do on there. So I start, I start to watch uh, videos, you know, Paget, you know, and Fred. I start to follow Fred. Mm -hmm. I went to shoot Fred. I, I, I travel with filmmaker Ethan to shoot uh, Fred. And so just like one event after another, I think that the big thing bought me, sold me. Um, well, I was also invited to go to this um, this fundraising event, uh, June 4th. I remember June 4th is because, you know, June 4th is the Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square. Square. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so they made that special day and special message. So I went that it's in Princeton, um, Princeton Club. Uh, that event was very, very intimate. Uh, it was only 20, maybe two of us, very small. Um, mm. And I saw Andrew Yan in a very intimate way, and I was more impressed. And then they gave us a book afterwards, you know, like a present because we paid money to go. So I actually read the book, and I also bought the CDs because sometimes mm -hmm. I like to listen to CDs when I'm driving. So and so that's it. So the book really sold me. Yeah. Yeah. What What was it a in the book that was most uh, memorable to you, or was it just a collection of ideas? Uh, I was very impressed by many, many details, things he's talking about, like education, like uh, 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 doctor, medical field, uh, you know, things. He, he talks about things in very detailed. Uh, uh, universal basic income to me, I, I had no idea because I, I, I do not know the existence of UBI then. You know? So to me, it wasn't like a huge sell to me, you know, but I, I was not sort of a, you know, turn, turned off either, you know, mm -hmm. but it was uh, just the way he talks, the way he writes it in a yeah. very personal way manner it feels like it, you're not being preached mm. uh, and and it, it's a, it's also it, i like a lot of time people write in in the first person because he wrote in first person so it's very acceptable and it, it's very uh uh mm -hmm. feel really close to you know so yeah um, and you talk about the war on normal people that yes that, yeah. sorry yeah mm -hmm. yeah the war on normal people yeah i feel like is surprisingly a, a kind of a heavy on policy, but he makes it very accessible and he makes it very approachable. And so you don't feel like you're reading a textbook, but yeah. after you're done, you, you're kind of like, actually, that was kind of like a textbook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so kudos yeah. to Andrew for kind of landing it and making it more um, something that, that people would uh, could kind of make their way through the whole thing and, and really, yeah. Kind of see a different perspective. Um, yeah. 
So tell yeah. me a little bit about uh, how much how much footage did you shoot? <laughs> Did you, did you like, have to buy like extra storage? I, I don't know. I was drowning into my footage. Yeah. Now compared to other films, you know, I use bigger camera and mm. the 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 chip are uh, much bigger, and so so it's not that much storage. Well, maybe uh, one hundred hours or more. You mm -hmm. know, uh, but um, it is because of so many events. I have went to. You know, including New York, four states probably covered about twelve or more different cities where I went, and you know, just just covered so many events. And so, I try not to overshoot, also, but because sometimes you could, you can overshoot. You know. Yeah. But but I have a, I mean, I'm like I have an iPhone 11, right? So I buy this, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? iCloud. So mm -hmm. iCloud is really great. You can, sh I, I mean, my iPhone is already 256 gigabyte, you know, so, right. but still uh, I get iCloud. So I don't have to worry about if my phone like drop dead, lost. Yeah. Or get mm -hmm. lost. So everything is stored with the iCloud. So, yeah. so I have to, I have to, it was very painful though. Maybe somebody can tell me I am doing, not doing right. Cause uh, all the footage was in iCloud, right? right? So now it took me four days to download, to download <laughs> back to my yeah. hard drive. You yeah. know, yeah. I have like yeah. a 30 hard drives yeah. and that took a long time. Yeah. So, but uh, going through all of them, make notes. And then I forget about it a week later <laughs> Then I have to watch again. Mm. So, so now I'm narrowing down like two weeks ago uh, from 100 hour footage. Uh, I, I was telling people, you know, I'm very open about my process. So it narrowed down to six hours. And now it, it's narrowed down to like today, it was like two hour 41 minute. Oh, hey, wow, nice. hallelujah. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> I'll give you a bell for that. <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot of hard editing there. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. your target? What, what what are you hoping to hit? Are you trying to get to two and a half or two or what are you thinking? Um, I have mixed feelings about it. Yeah. Um, uh, I think for now I'm going to just do some young guys so sweet because I, I I treated um you know says oh I have to trim 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 and they say oh I'm willing to watch three hours so <laughs> <laughs> so I think um I think the first version it will be just for me to be happy yeah so mm -hmm. maybe within three hours and this and then I have to cut I have to cut if I want to uh, show to people people will fall asleep three hours so I have to sh uh, cut to probably less than two hours mm -hmm. and then if I have to hit you know PBS you know who knows then you have to go 57 minute you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that, that's very very painful very painful yeah when do you think you'll have the director's cut the three hour version ready and do you have to hold that back? so that you can try and get the shorter version um, redistributed? Or do you think you can release the director's cut first? Or I I don't really know. I am like very uh, one person band. Um, yeah. I, I've attended a, a film festival before. It was all shorts, you know, 12 minutes mm -hmm, or 15 mm -hmm. minutes. Uh, this is a really a long one. Um, I, I I don't really know for sure. I think I could show it to friends, you know, to young and but I don't think I can uh, openly put the whole yeah. uh, director's cut uh, on social media because uh, lots of film festivals, they, they want the world premiere. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Issue. But I don't mind sharing privately, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, um, what's the timeline? Like, when do you think you'll <laughs> you'll make it sort of you know broadly yeah. available? I think uh, someday. I think I will never finish it. And then today, I was thinking maybe in two weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. So it it depends. Uh, it's like I think about this day and night. I come up with better ideas, even better clips. Uh, when I'm sleep, when I when I'm in sleep, and then I get up, you know, you know, I add something in. Uh, so it's evolving constantly, 
but I think at a certain time you have to stop. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I would say two to three weeks. But right now I I did made a uh, three minute um, sort of a, it's, om it's almost like a preview slash uh, intro thing, you know, just to clear my mm -hmm. head. And I just throw throw it on on Twitter and you saw it and you liked it. <laughs> yeah. Should, Should we, we take a look at it together? Yeah. Yeah, should All we right. show it to our audience? And I want to thank people. There's a lot of people there. Elizabeth, Nora, Lendo, Laura, Elizabeth, Stormwatch59, <laughs> Nerds for Yen, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a lot of people. And some people actually, I think, know me. Hey, Sam, thank you. The artist, uh, so what? That's uh, Sam is in my film. He's awesome. He's All awesome. Right. Yeah. So right. there's just so many uh, awesome people, and and even I was I was saying today, even like I I, I choked up like mm. I sometimes I'm I'm gonna throw up looking at that you know because it's too much looking at it. But um, so okay, you want to find it? No. Yeah, I think uh, okay. I think I may have found it. Um, and so I have your permission to show this on the stream since you are the uh, yeah not this this celebration home. celebration is for. Um, Oh, Th this not this one. Yeah, All right, I can share sure. if you want me to. Uh, let's see. It yeah, might it's the be next under... one. Oh, it's the next one. I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, it's your page. So I, I can find it for you, right? Yeah, right. if you want to find it for me, and you okay. can either um, put it in the private chat, and I can share it, or you could share it. But just when you share, share yeah. just make sure you check off the box that says share audio. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm good at that. You know, I, right. I, uh, you're know, my teacher. Uh, I've done, um, uh, I've done 70, 70 talk shows now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here we go. I love it. So here we go. This is the intro. I would still call this working in progress. Okay. okay. So it's nothing is like, a... let's see it. Hold on. Here we go. Can you hear? Understand why you looking crazy, crazy. And the demons fill me up, got me feeling hazy. All I got is the light, him keep me up. Like a thief in the night, him creeping up. I can feel it in my soul, something changing. Now, I've worked with the, in technology for a number of years. How many of you all work in technology here in New York? There's a lot of people, there's a lot of technology in the Yang Gang. If you have your hand up, you know that what we did to the manufacturing jobs, we will now do to the retail jobs, the call center jobs, the fast food jobs, the truck driving jobs, and on and on through the economy. Andrew Yen! Andrew Yen! And I'm going to be offering real solutions. Americans will immediately see the difference, uh, and that's how we're going to win in 2020. And the style of having the got to take him down the got to his main stop and told you why he's different and why that's good and why it goes to the question of electability. Andrew, yeah. I am that candidate. I can build a much broader coalition to beat Donald Trump. It is not left. It is not right. It is forward. And that is where I'll take the country in 2020. Big brown eyes staring back at me. Something familiar in the things I see. Fast, I don't want to be standing here when he comes for me. Can't you look up, babe? You're scaring me. Feel like something's coming after me. Over my head, babe. Beneath the sheet. Feel like something's coming after me. Face to face, what a tragedy <laughs> In a demon staring back at me Just to ignore, I don't wanna see Down to my core, him living me Now, I cannot lie, I'm a little scared I know it's him, I can feel it still
That's it. Wow, that three minutes went by fast. <laughs> I think I think there's a uh, appetite for. Uh, I'm sure I have an appetite for the three hour version, but I know. Uh, Thank what, you. What, what do you think, Ching? When you look at all those clips, is there a particular one that kind of you find most that resonates most with you that you're like, wow, that really captures the story I want to tell? Um. Well, I basically covered four states, New York State, uh, and then Connecticut, and then Iowa, uh, Iowa week, uh, Yen week, and mm -hmm. then New Hampshire three weeks. So they're all very different. New York is more like a event, you know, go protest, a lot of people kind of a, 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 a feel, yeah. And um, it's a lot of excitement in New York, in mm -hmm. New York City, where I went to shoot. And then uh, Connecticut was a very tender moment. It was a huge snow, and I followed them to go to uh, they they the, the boys and girls went to uh, you know canvassing to to people. It's their first time canvassing actually. Uh, that was a pretty early uh, uh, December first. Yeah, December 1st, because their primary is, is in April. So they actually did it really early. So that that's also very touching. Uh, even the clip is very short. And then uh, Iowa, I think it's the most, uh, to me, uh, profound in Iowa. And um, Iowa, we I met so many incredible people from all different states now. Yeah. And so it's very special like i captured so many of them they announced their name with their states you get to mm. see it like from so many different places yeah um they are so intelligent they are young mostly though i have to say i'm i'm, I'm the mom of their group and uh but they're so well spoken they're they're, they're, you think young and sometimes people think we are nuts, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are nuts, you know? If we're not <laughs> nuts, we're not going to be doing that, you know? But they are so philosophical, the way they talk, the way they, they're so articulated. So in Iowa, is 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 yeah, we went to rural places, you know? We can't even hardly walk, you know? <laughs> and then snow uh, and raining and... Mm. Um, we yen people in gas station. I yenned a yeah a uh, Middle Eastern person. Uh, we I got his caucus card that was captured. It was a lot of fun, you know. And then uh, New Hampshire is a different feel. New Hampshire is very um, just few of us in one house. It's mm. not like twenty young gang get together. Uh, lots of young gang they are or already working for the yen. Uh, headquarters you know mm -hmm. they are workers they're not so volunteer just a few of us and it's a very intimate uh, uh setting uh jack chan was amazing the host so i would go canvas with jack i would go canvas with philip with philip is from a uh, uh, new new mexico uh i would philip like is an incredible character he came directly from new zealand to canvas because he was in New Zealand learning mm. dancing, you know, he's like happily unemployed. <laughs> and so he, he came to, to New Hampshire. And then uh, uh, Nick Rivera is my partner and who has so many uh, scenes in the whole film and he's remarkable. Um, and then so many young guys, yeah. Uh, Yunjie. Yunjie is from New York, uh, a conductor, a musician. And then Sam is awful, uh, awesome. Sam is awesome. And then we have musicians. Okay, the soundtrack in this thing, I narrow down to use Henry's singing. Henry is this African American guy. He was talking, mm -hmm. you know, in uh, after Jack. That's him. He's a singer. He's a great singer, and he just ran for the uh, uh, Florida uh, commissioner, county commissioner. Yeah. Anyway, so there's a lot of uh, incredible people. Adam, I'm going to use Adam's music too. Adam Burton from California. And he's the one, uh, I think he's the one in the trailer, was like looking back to me, you know, mm -hmm. just making funny faces, you know, because he's like, 
Yeah, there's so many funny things. They they talk like weird, like a Scottish or some kind of English accent. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have a lot of fun. We go eat hot pot and then we do a lot of things. Yeah, and we sometimes curse, you know. So it's not a, a PG thirteen film. <laughs> I'm I'm guessing、uh, that's very common in political campaigns. So、uh, understand yeah. it's a yeah it's a different environment out there. What You know the thing that、uh, when I was watching that trailer that kind of resonated with me was、um, was actually seeing Fred on there. Yes. Because I think Fred to me represents kind of the kind of the heart and soul of the Yang Twenty Twenty campaign to the、yeah. extent that it's like, hey, there's a whole part of this country that has really been overlooked. By the Democratic Party,、yeah. and has been sold a bill of goods by the sort of Trump Trumpist kind of、uh, movement, and I think Andrew presented a very different solution to a real problem that was way more constructive and and innovative. And you, that's the thing that when when Yang suspended his campaign, I felt like we lost. We lost that that kind of、um, resonance、mm -hmm. with a lot of these disaffected voters who are just kind of tired of both parties and feel like they've been、um, ignored or or、yeah. kind of、uh, taken for granted.、Um, do you think like、uh, what what's what are your thoughts on twenty twenty four or even cabinet role for Yang? What do you think's next? I mean, that video is nostalgic. Uh, and yet, we still have problems today, and we need to we need to keep fighting. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I <clears throat> excuse me. I definitely、uh, would like to have、uh, Andrew Yang to to get a cabinet position、uh, that can change making the needles move. But also,、uh, I would love to see him,、uh, you know, get together again for for Yang twenty twenty four. I try to buy license plate. You see my license plate, twenty twenty, and I try to get license plate Yen twenty twenty four. It's already taken. <laughs> maybe the maybe I should try and see if I can pick it up in California. It's、yeah. probably taken. Yeah. 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 So you should I confess a story? Go for、uh, it. I'll confess a story. Okay. So、um, I wanted to buy Yen twenty twenty. I love license plate. You know, personalized. I always do. So, but I didn't buy that、uh, before I go to、uh, Iowa, and then when I was in New Hampshire, I feel very patriotic.、Uh, so I ordered online. Yeah. So that was like maybe two weeks before he announced <laughs> suspended. So by the time <laughs> by the time I return back to my home,、mm -hmm. and it 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 has arrived. That that's like after like February, you know, like. Twelve or thirteen, I、yeah. I came home, so I religiously kept that envelope. I did not open. I、uh. I was waiting for a moment to open with somebody. I don't know who. Okay, because I, <laughs> I I I was like I don't want to open because it's too too important, you know. Um, by the way, I got you should、ticket. live stream the unboxing of your your personalized plates and then、uh, <laughs> put it on the car. <laughs> I did. I did. So I didn't live stream. So what <laughs> happened was、uh, March,、uh -huh. March, I believe the seventh, uh, 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 March seventh. We're not locked down yet, you know.、Mm -hmm. uh, Jack and Laura came to Manhattan, and then Ed also. Ed is is another young man, a New Hampshire young man. They're all in the film. So they three of us came to my house.、Mm. So we had a little ceremony. <laughs> I open, I open the thing in front of three of them,、mm -hmm. and we made a short film. You know, went to shoot the box. You know, the, uh, yeah. like, uh, you know, I was opening my mailbox. Yeah, you know that that's kind of like、oh. a pretend. It's a pretend. Right,、yeah. right, right. It's not like I received that day. I actually received a month ago. I just did not open. So I made a scene of that, and I thinking I did not know what I was going to do with the footage. You know, so、mm -hmm. but I'm glad I'm sort of tied up the whole. Whole thing, maybe you know. In the end,、uh, I I go back to the license plate again. You know, I I don't have the end yet. So, anyway, to did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that actually might be a nice ending 
Well, you know what would be a great ending is if yeah. if it were you putting on your Yang 2024 plates. Oh, so yeah, then, I know. Right? I know. And then we kind of like, you know, point to what's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, maybe if I cannot find Yen 2024, maybe I I will look for Gen 20, 2024. How's that? Yeah, or YG 2024. Yeah, they have that. I I checked. Yeah, yeah. they do. They have YG. <laughs> oh, my audience is gonna buy it. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, Someone's gonna yeah. grab please, it. Please, 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 <laughs> let me buy it. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are what are your thoughts on politics today? Like, uh, obviously, we just went through a pretty big election. My I was I was having a debate this morning with my my brother who's uh who's still in the MAGA camp. Uh I'm curious what your take is. Like how are you feeling about uh Biden and Trump and the future? Well, I was not really, you know, that uh fuzzy had that fuzzy feelings about Biden, mm. but uh at least you know we pick a less of an evil right in the general so uh i i did vote for for uh for biden and uh i was so nervous you know so nervous if trump would win you know mm. one would win again uh that so in that sense uh it's in a better direction but uh who knows um i guess a lot of people are uh, having doubts about Democratic Party, you know, and so, like I said before, I wasn't really that, uh, you know, uh, sensitive about the politics. Um, I love doing things for people. That's mm -hmm. no problem, you know. So, I don't know. I just think in in larger direction, it's a better direction. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's difficult for me to really believe or follow anyone i was telling people you know it's like i grew up in china in red china and uh we believe mao zedong and mm -hmm. then that ideological thing is just you know all, all fall apart and i don't believe anyone I mean, it's for me to follow andrew Young like that it's really nuts you know nutty you know <laughs> 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 right um so you you hesitated to talk about voting for Biden. Was it a hard call? Yes, I agree with you. He's no Andrew Yang. Um, but was it was it a difficult decision or what were you what was going to be your alternative if you didn't vote for Biden just to stay home or <laughs> Well, no, I I will vote. I no, I I I vote for Biden because I I want Trump to leave. That's yeah. mainly is that, yeah. But I don't think, you know, I don't have any uh, strong evidence of how bad Biden is, you know, although people say, you know, stuff about him, but lots of, uh, uh, you know, media portray him or uh, uh, what do you call, CNN made all these uh, documentary about Biden and his wife. They are all very touching and very nice, you know. So uh, I have to realize that he, he has served, uh, you know 40 some years as a public servant so we do you know i i do give him credit about that but in terms of uh but i do i i also a little bit worry about he's he's a little bit kind of uh kind of old mm. so not that you know i don't know i hope he 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 holds up for a good four years yeah. it's a tough job um yeah. frankly if he just even did nothing for four years, it might yeah. be still better than yeah. what would have happened in the alternative case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. that's I think, sure. I mm -hmm. think that's, I mean, investors, I, I think they're betting on, frankly, if the Republicans hold on to the Senate and, and, and the Democrats have the house and Biden's in the white house, like actually that's kind of a do no harm four years. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't address a lot of the fundamental problems that we're facing as a country, mm -hmm. but um, at least it doesn't exacerbate them in the way that another four years of Trumpism probably would have. Right. You know? Right. So, uh, what what are your thoughts on the Yang Gang? Like, do you think we're holding up? Like, you you actually have spent 
you know, hours and hours and weeks and weeks on the road with some of the core volunteers? Like, how, how are you, how are people doing? Yeah, I think uh, we're chuckling around since uh, March 27th, I, um, because of the lockdown, I can't see mm -hmm. my youngins. So I started, actually the idea was first to start it because I can't see them. So I started this uh, talk show, like like what you do, mm. uh, use uh, StreamYard. So I look back, like today, I even look back to see my record. I, I see them like almost every week. And so for three months, so I did about 12 episodes of with groups. I would say this group is like, or uh, say Iowa people mm -hmm. or, you know, New Hampshire people or Connecticut people or New York people. So try to try to talk to people who know each other, right? Otherwise it's kind of boring. Um, so, and then I started to individually interview people. So, mm. so we talk to each other quite a lot. Uh, I've done all together like a, 12, 13 episodes with Yang Gan and then individual people probably I did six, seven or eight. So we we talked a, a day after the election, which is November 4th. Mm -hmm. um, so so I'm in very close contact with say uh, uh, Nick Rivera from Connecticut, uh, Yunjie, Yunjie Lee from New York, uh, Adam uh, Burton from California, Sam uh, from Virginia, uh, Henry, Henry from Florida. Uh, oh, many of them. Yeah. And yeah. Jody. Yeah. Joy. Yeah. Nell. Nell is also with us. Yeah. Nell's everywhere. I know. Nell is awesome. Nell's yeah. like, he's, he's like Mr. Yang Gang. I love that guy. Yeah. She's yeah. in my film too. In the end, we went to <laughs> watch, uh, uh, Andrew Yang on view on the view. Mm. And then I, uh, yeah, I did not know Nell before that. So he made the film. Yeah. Do you, uh, someone was asking if you, uh, would consider going to Georgia to see if you could film what Andrew's up to down there? Uh, yes. Um, I get the information about almost two weeks ago, two weeks mm -hmm. ago. <clears throat> People ask me if I want to go, and I say yes. I would like to go. Um, my concern right now, major concern, is two things. One is I'm kind of so obsessed with this doc. I want to, you know, yeah, work on it every single day. Like yesterday, I worked on um, 15 hours. You know, nice. so I sent my my pet family to somewhere else to have turkey. You know, I don't want to eat turkey, and you can eat turkey somebody else's house. So they went. So I just worked all day. Um, not very nice of me. <laughs> so, but but uh, I got a lot down yesterday. Um, so one thing is the, 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 the working. The other is the pandemic. I do yeah. kind of get more and more nervous now. I was not too nervous before. Mm. Now I see the number goes higher and higher. And then so I get a little nervous. So, so I know... You know, you go to Georgia, you'll stay in the house, you'll share with 10 other people. How are you going to be, uh, you know, socially uh, distancing very effectively? That concerns me. Yeah, I would imagine you wouldn't, uh, that that would be a, a elevated risk environment. If you're going to be in a, in a house with 10 other people and you're canvassing. Yeah. That is the definition of not social distancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I'm, yeah. I'm gonna drive there, and I'm sure when I get there, I will drive other people with me. You know, yeah. to the canvas, and so you cannot do things alone. You don't want to do things alone. Yeah. So yeah, I I will first do is to to write postcards, and I will write about fifty postcards first. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, you could almost imagine a new form of canvassing where you'd have to um, create a pod of, you know, some small number of people, three or four people that you stay with that you canvass with. Uh, and then you guys don't don't mix with the other canvassers and you stay six feet from the voters. <laughs> that would probably be like a safer way. But I agree it's with hard. you. It's hard. Yeah. No, and I then hear you. When you go knock on people's door, right? And people can just say, I don't want to see you. Bye bye. You know? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. it's a very difficult time. It's a very difficult time. Yeah. I uh you know, but I don't know. I sometimes I'm I'm a risk taker. So who knows? If if my dog is in a good shape, 
in two weeks, mm -hmm. then I may consider going to Georgia, uh, you know, before the whole thing ends, you know. Yeah. I can always go in the middle of December. I, yeah. So we'll see. Well, <laughs> if you do it, please take every precaution you can. Yes, um, I will. I feel like there's a lot of people who, I don't know, I wouldn't call it irrational exuberance, but like yeah. the vaccine progress is great. I don't know anybody that's gotten access to it. Uh -huh. I don't think we're going to get access to it, uh, you know, in large numbers for a long time. Uh -huh. uh, so you you worry, you watch these people traveling on Thanksgiving, mixing around, like sitting shoulder to shoulder in these planes yeah. Yeah. and literally spreading across the country. Uh -huh. And a lot of them were like, well, we have the vaccine. I was like, no, you don't have the vaccine. You don't uh -huh. have the vaccine. No, when are we going to have it? What's the rumor about? Yeah, I mean, if you read the news reports, uh, it looks like maybe March, April. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, I mean, if you're losing 2,000 people a day, that means, uh, you know, a couple hundred thousand people are going to die before we get yeah. broad access, right? So, yeah. That this is where um, you know C. Prowse is saying like, hey, what do you think the top, big picture will Trump will he really still look like the lesser of two evils? I think on the COVID mm -hmm. stuff alone, mm -hmm. I mean, we have a quarter of a million people mm -hmm. that died just in this country, and you wonder if Trump had taken it more seriously mm -hmm. and encouraged his, the governors of the red states to you know, take more active measures and his mm. followers. I mean, he has 90 million followers on Twitter and <laughs> never did I see him say, Hey, please wear a mask and stay distant. The most I've seen him say is like, I don't have a problem with masks, but if you assume like maybe had he been a more active leader, he could have reduced deaths by say 10%. Yeah. That's 25,000 lives. Yeah, I know. You know, it's and that's just Victoria to now. And then between now and inauguration day, it, we at the current rate, it's going to be something like another hundred thousand that die. So, to me, that 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 was a, the debate I was having with my brother this morning, and um, he was like, "Oh, you know, why are you so? <laughs> why are you still so anti-Trump?" I'm like. Because even after he's lost, he's mm -hmm. acting like there isn't a pandemic. And he's acting like it's done. And he's acting like everybody has access to a vaccine that we don't have access to. So, yes, I do feel like he's kind of been a, definitely the greater of two evils for mm -hmm. our November 4th decision. And it's even more, I hate to use this charged word, but it's more deplorable that after he's lost, he's still trying to put his own pride Mm -hmm. ahead of what he used to say. I mean, America first was his slogan. Mm -hmm. But if you ask yourself, is he acting like America first now? Like he's losing all these court cases. He's not going to win. Yeah. So why why continue to undermine the faith in the, the democratic system? And why undermine the administration the same way he tried to undermine Obama saying, oh, well, you know, he's an illegitimate president because he was born in Africa or something. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. he's a secret Muslim and all this stuff. It's like, come yeah. on, man. Like, it's not always about you. I think uh, Trump is really mentally ill. He's not mm. normal. You know, he doesn't have a common sense. I don't think he even have common sense. So um, I, I wrote a, a somewhere either a Twitter, Twitter or on Facebook so is like, a, do you want to have dinner with this guy? You know, do you want to be friends with him or do you want your daughter to marry him? No. God so, <laughs> so he's like that, you know, not, not to even mention about high power or being a, you know, president of yeah. the, the country. So I, we, we are so unfortunately, uh, you know, in that position for the last four years and our country really, you know, just like backwards in many ways, you know, so hopefully. Yeah, it's so, it's it's a really kind of intellectual acrobatics, kind of a feat of intellectual acrobatics that some of the MAGA supporters I've, be, uh, I've noticed have, have completed, which is if you ask them one-on-one -on -one and you said like, well, honestly, if you had a daughter, 
-hmm. and there was like a 40 year old or 30 year old Donald mm -hmm. Trump, like, would you, would you want your, your daughter to marry this guy? Mm -hmm. Or if you said, Hey, if you were going into business, yeah. would you hire this man to run your business? Or would you want to work for this man? Right. Or would you want to uh, lend this man money? And most people will say, no, no, of course not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. or like, would you yeah. want this man to be the principal of your, your kid's school? No, right. hell no. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. Some, but somehow it's like, but, you know, I like his judicial uh, appointments and I like how he says things that I'm thinking and all this kind of stuff. And it's, and I, I, I understand the power of that, but yeah. I don't know, call me old fashioned. Like I want a president that I feel like has integrity yeah. And uh, I don't see that coming. And and the, the thing that I mean, I, anybody watching this channel knows I've never liked Trump from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I even voted for Hillary, even though I didn't like Hillary, but I liked uh, him less. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, I think the thing with Trump is like after you lost, you're still not being graceful. You're not you're not being uh, magnanimous. I think you're the president of the United States. And you're going around saying that, like, you know, uh, the vote counting machines were secretly controlled by the Venezuelans and like the Castro family is involved in how the votes were counted in Pennsylvania. It's like, come on, man, like get a hold of yourself. And the problem is, like, when he says that stuff, because he is the president and because he has such a deep following, yeah. people assume like, oh, George yeah. Soros really did secretly yeah. moved 10 million votes overnight to Biden. Yeah. You know, he just like logged into some secret website. Yeah. Like really? The bring your evidence to court because you are the America first law and order, right? Best people show me. Yeah. Where is this? Anyway, so I'm sorry. I get very fired <laughs> up talking about Trump. I mean, it's just so sad. He's he, he's supposed to be going and he's still yeah. invading our space. I know, <laughs> clenching on that that house. Yeah. 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 So, um, um, tell me a little bit, uh, uh, Cheng, about in terms of the documentary. Mm -hmm. um, if you had to describe the narrative of the documentary, like what's the storyline uh, of of what you're trying to get across? Um, because it's such a long journey uh like a 10 month of shooting uh it, it it's you know without a script and you never know i never know what's going to happen next so i made it a film more or less uh, i that's why i call it uh it's my young and uh, diary uh with this in mind it's like a reading a diary i put dates there each event has a date and the location and describe and then probably we'll add a little bit of uh, narration in it um so it would it's basically describing being a young and how you know how how what we did for ngm movement uh what are these people uh self selfless people did uh, in so uh it, it doesn't have a tragedy too much tragedy has some downside you know has mm -hmm. some uh, sad moments but mostly uh, it's uh, pretty inspirational. I want people to see these people. I, I really want, because I don't know them before, you know, uh, before last June. And yeah. so I want people to see my young and how they work. And also I hope when people see that, it will inspire another movement too, like for some future uh, campaign. Uh, what to do and um, uh, oh yeah Otara was wonderful also Tully I call him Tully yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah shaving with Tully shaving with Tully yeah he had a, <laughs> he had a, a lots of parts in it and so I don't know did I give you a different I think in my film I said uh in the whatever you call uh I'm sorry where, where did it go um um, it, it, it has a description in the bottom. Let's see. I said, uh, for 10 months, I followed the young gang, people who supports Andrew Yen, that's young gang, in 12 cities from New York, Connecticut, Iowa, and New Hampshire. The doc captured 
the dedication, hardworking, and selflessness selflessness of the youngin. From all ages, different backgrounds and colors, youngin are students, intellectuals, artists, farmers, and truckers. Believe in Andrew Yen's not left, not right, forward. They are Democrats as well as Republicans and in between. It was an incredible ride and I am sharing with you my diary. The doc is still in the cutting room. Hope to show it to you soon. So that's my sort of description on my... Uh, yeah, on my, well, yeah. That, that captures it well. Yeah. The sort of diversity of the, the people on the yeah. ground. Yeah. And it was less about, of course, the policy and the leader are important, but I think the magic was this wonderfully uh, unusual kind of uh, confluence of personalities and backgrounds right. and right. perspectives yeah. around a single movement. And uh, yeah. yeah, it wasn't as monolithic as, let's say, you know, other other campaigns ha have been. So I, I totally get that. And My I, I did... Yeah, sorry. My my focus uh, is about Yang Gan, but but I also uh, have footage of Andrew Yan here and there, actually uh, mm -hmm. many places. Because without showing Andrew Yan, it's like people will say, well, "What's great about him?" You know. Right. So so there is footage about Andrew Yan, but I almost feel like Andrew Yan is the background of the Yang Gan. It's the other way around. It's the Yang Gan. I am featuring because I did not have a one-to-one -one dialogue with Andrea myself, you know. So, mm -hmm. but has plenty of Andrea's footage and also news footage. I use a little bit of MSNBC, CNN, or New York One, a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you observe the whole media treatment of Yang, or did, what? What do you What do you think about? how that all went down <laughs> in oh, terms yeah. of how the campaign was covered. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was it was not good. It was not good. They misspelled his name and they, you know, they put the wrong face onto right. so we went to NBC to protest, you know, and mm. and and I also follow other young gang like the pageant. So mm -hmm. the reason I went to Iowa uh not only yeah, many different sources coming towards me, but by listening, Paget about uh, about she's going to. They went to or, or already the young. What do you call young Palooza? What do you call that? Uh, oh, Yanga Palooza. Yanga Palooza. <laughs> yeah. So I was watching Yanga Palooza. I was teaching in the middle. I was college teaching. I was like. I start my break earlier so I can see them, you know, <laughs> in in Iowa, you know. So and I send like fifty dollars to them to have lunch, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I think it, my stimulant is from many directions, not just one source. Yeah. So I have to thank a pay a pageant. I in, invited her to talk on my talk show uh, earlier. So so to back to your question, um, I didn't feel terribly like like terrible but i was mm -hmm. in the movement you know we protest we went to protest when ngr didn't make it to the uh, seventh uh, seventh debate in mm -hmm. in the cold weather three degree in uh, <laughs> in iowa yeah. yeah 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 and then we also protest in new hampshire and the the in the last debate his last debate was eighth debate um mm -hmm. we also line up it was like a stormy uh, raining and cold so yeah, I know it's it's terrible. The the media treated him, but I I don't know if he's the only one being treated like that, or is a is it just because um, they intentionally, you know, being being this sloppy in their journalism? Yeah, my my uh, intuition would be that there was certainly no great conspiracy against Yang, in my opinion. But I do think producers and news reporters, they have to triage and decide how to spend their time. And nobody wants to write a bunch of stories about, um, you know, uh, some candidate that you don't think is going to make it, right? Like nobody wants to spend a ton of time writing stories about, uh, you know, Kirsten Gillibrand or whoever or... Um, you know, the governor of Washington state, you know, these are, uh, you know, uh, 
all interesting candidates, but everybody's candidate is their Yang. And when they mm -hmm. don't get covered, they get pissed. I will say maybe they underestimated how much kind of uh, ceiling, how, how much room Yang had to grow. Right. And that, wait a minute, actually, there might have been three tiers of candidates and they assumed he was tier three, but he really was tier two <laughs> and he didn't get tier two coverage. Yeah. But I do think he will get tier two coverage next the next time. time around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then I have be a up question. To, up, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I have a question for you. Sorry. Sorry, Tom. Oh, go for it. So where the heck is Yang and first started? Like, who do you know? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I remember I interviewed Zach and he was saying that like the campaign helped kind of gin up some of that early Yang Gang interest. But I don't know, like there's probably patient zero, the first person that got Yanged, right? That that was starting to kind of volunteer and stuff. Yeah. But when I think of Yang Gang, like capital Y, capital G, I feel like folks like Fred and Paget and Zach and Matt, uh, Problem Solver, you know, those are, you know, boys. I think there are some early folks yeah. who really leaned in um, well before Yang support seemed to justify it. Yeah. And, yeah. and they may not have been chronologically the first Yang gang, but they, I feel like they had outsized impact. Yeah. And and many of them continue to today. Yeah. You know? Joe. Joe is in my film many times. Joe Gibbs. <laughs> Do you know Joe? I don't know Joe. No. Joe is a New York New York uh a young gang. Yeah. You're gonna see him. He yeah, the it. uh I think my role in in this story is a unique one in that I was one of the few overseas Yang Gang, you know, because during most of the campaign I was in Europe. And didn't move back to the states until this summer. Mm. So I, I'm all of my Yang Gang activity has been had been virtual. How did I, you know him? Just from media? Or from Andrew? Media? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, it was a Rogan podcast. Oh, okay, okay. I was okay. listening to a podcast. I had no idea. It was a Joe Rogan clip. I wasn't even listening to the full interview, but it was about uh, college. Oh. And how college is often, you know, overprescribed, which is something I've um, felt strongly about for a long time. And so I was like, oh, this is cool. Here's a guy who is advocating for less college and more alternatives to college. Mm -hmm. And also, he seems to be talking about how the white working class has been kind of left behind. And that's yeah. a root cause of, you know, why Trump won. And then later in the interview, I guess it had dawned on me that he was actually running for president. And I was like, what? Because I thought he was just like a book author, maybe, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Ju not just, but, you know, yeah, a book yeah, author yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And then when they, he was like running for president, I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. You know, and then as an Asian American, how could you not feel at least a little bit um, inspired? Yes. Because when I, you know, I was born here in, in the early 70s and I never thought we'd see an Asian American man running for president ever. Right. Uh, I thought maybe my great grandchildren might see that someday, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So it was kind of historic for me to see that. And, and so I'm quite, uh, uh, yeah, but that basically I, I was all virtual. I was all watching this from Zurich, Switzerland. Wow. wow. <laughs> As an expat. I was one of 90 people who voted for Yang in the Democrats overseas uh, primary. <laughs> wow. Awesome. So yeah. I, do you miss uh, Zurich or are you glad to be back in uh, California? I love California. So I had not lived here before. Before Zurich, I was in Seattle for 13 years. And then before I that, I was in New England for uh, a lot of time. Um, and then before that, I grew up outside of New York City in northern New Jersey. So I love California. I love the sunshine. I love the weather. I love the Asian food, the Mexican food. Yeah. Um, I work in technology, so it's great if you work in tech. Like this, there's there's a lot of opportunity yeah. in the Bay Area. Right. So um, I love. I miss parts of Zurich, like parts of Switzerland, like the natural beauty 
Yeah. Um, I miss the amazing kind of public transportation system. Um, and I miss the travel I did. So I was in Zurich for four years. So we would travel like almost every month to a different part of Europe. And that was amazing. That was just, uh, super cool but you know we're uh it was it was an amazing part of my my life journey but uh very excited to be back in the states especially as a political junkie how can you not be <laughs> yeah. here and what i witnessed that general election and i literally took off a week from work uh for election week because i was planning on uh, you know really digging into the outcome and and it certainly yeah. uh, did not There's disappoint such you're such a number guy. You have all these statistics and it's like, <laughs> it, it will spend a lot of time. Yeah. You know, it, it will take a lot of time for you yeah. to gather all the information. It's amazing. Yeah. It yeah. was fun. It was fun. I mean, that election week, watching the results roll in and kind of playing out all the scenarios, uh, was just, uh, was just a, a joy for me because I mean, I felt like we were watching history being made, which we were, and I thought by now we would have more closure, but um, yeah, I, th I thought I thought the president would give a concession speech by now, but um, <laughs> doesn't look like we're going to get that. You Do know. you speak Chinese? I studied it uh, for a couple years in college. Yeah, my parents speak uh, Cantonese. Oh, and my wife is Singaporean, so she speaks Mandarin. Oh, okay. Uh, but English is for sure my first language. And I, I was going to you know, say, yeah, I was going to say like, like a certain language, like there's, you can't really translate very well. Like Trump right now doesn't want to leave White House, right? Like Chinese people would say, lai zai nali, lai. Lai <laughs> is a very funny word. Lai yeah. is like someone you want to drag them drag out them. and they right. don't want to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll leave kicking and screaming. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right, definitely. So yeah. it's too bad. And when when you were watching it a week before the election or the day of the election, did you have a good feeling? Like we don't know, you know. You know, a week before the election, yeah, I thought there was going to be a blue wave, and uh, uh, I I uh, thought that the the kind of frustration over the last four years with Trump would be so big and the COVID handling was so poorly done yeah, that people would just say enough yeah. and, and wanted to kind of turn the page. And obviously I was wrong uh -huh. because, uh, you know, it, I know that Kellyanne Conway and the Re Republicans have said that when you get 306 electoral votes, it's considered a landslide. Uh -huh. But in my book, it was not a landslide. It wasn't a landslide in 2016, and it wasn't one in 2020 either. Uh -huh. um, and I think it, it's shocking and very disappointing uh, and concerning that the Congress lost seats. Uh huh. In uh -huh. all, like, I mean, really, like, how did you? How how is the Democratic Party going to answer to that? Yeah. Um, and that the Senate is is like hanging in the balance just because of a couple runoffs in Georgia during this historic period where clearly leadership has not been present by the, the Republican Party, but you know, by them kind of yeah. enabling this madman. So yeah, I thought it was going to be way uh, stronger win. For the yeah, Democrats, and I see, yeah, and I feel like now Too close. we have not had the come to Jesus within mm. the Democratic Party mm. about why did we basically get our ass kicked in mm -hmm. the House of Representatives, and why did we not pick up uh, more seats mm. in the Senate, mm. and why did we just barely win the White House? Mm. Clearly, we're missing something. There's a huge part of the country that feels like the Democratic Party is not speaking to them. Mm -hmm. And this is where I think an Andrew Yang nomination would have been a blue wave. Mm -hmm. I really do. I feel like Biden was kind of like, uh, I, my brother was just saying to me, how is it that Biden got 80 million people to vote for him? I was like, 80 million people did not vote for Biden. They voted against Trump. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that means the Democratic Party is, still needs an answer for 2024 because yeah. yeah. you're not going to be able to run against Trump again. I mean, I hope not. I, yeah. I suppose it's possible. Trump says he's kind of dangling it out there that he might, he might return to the scene in 2024, but you know, yeah. Yeah. That would be another crazy outcome. Should I play you a very short 
clip of uh, one of the piece. It's not from the current yeah. thing. It's because the current is really long. I cannot render it in short time. <laughs> but I find like a bunch of them. So this one is funny. It's it's called chasing the mother trucker. It's like it's supposed to be chasing the yeah, you know, I got you. mother. Uh -huh, F, you know? uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, because uh, okay, so the story was uh, Fred. I went to visit Fred with ethan the filmmaker mm -hmm. uh, on november 3rd I, I drove like we drove like three or four hours i forgot upstate new york and then after we visited him he decided to come into city anyway the next day so that's how the story is he drove the truck with the ng yen thing and a uh, storm manhattan okay mm. all right I'll, I'll play a little bit so, this will be a great way to round out our interview because I know we're okay. running out over time. Yeah, and so I know. This is perfect. You're over time. <laughs> I always go over. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm fine. Let's see. Where is my piece? Uh, While you're pulling that up, I have to give credit to American Jobs Factory for having oh, okay. the first Yang interview. Okay. You want to do it now? No, no. I was just oh. giving him a shout out. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Just go fast forward a little bit. <laughs> Driving for a long time. And he was Yang Gang. And we were like, yo, you know Fred the fella? He's like, yeah. Is like, anybody yo, he's fucking coming here, Are you Chong? I'm Chong. Chong? Yes. Hi, Ching. Ching, pleasure. Nice to meet you in person. <laughs> I followed him from like where yeah, I live. Yeah, we were fucking... I, yeah, I was like, uh, I was telling them to shut the fuck up. With the, the people honking. Oh. Oh, yeah. New York City. That's, that's so that's Trump, Trump Hotel, Hotel, right? Yeah. Right there. Yeah, it's on a hot, high price. Uh, uh, May I ask him what's your Woo! name? Uh, hi. Hi, Ty. I'm uh, Brian. Brian. Burners for Yang. Burners I'm for Ching. Yang. Where's uh, Ching. Sean? Right Sean's right here. Oh, uh, okay. So, how can I get across from. You gotta go up that street. Where we came back from. You gotta go around that circle and go up that street. Oh, uh, fuck. So what you wanna do is oh, go fuck. around that circle and instead of turning the. Is he driving a west tractor west trailer west through west Manhattan? West. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he said it right. <laughs> he drove the whole thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then. So then right we there. have. Okay. And then, if there's enough room. Yeah. And I feel like I can park. I'm gonna park right in front of that motherfucker. And pop right. my brakes. Nice to meet you in person, brother. Yeah, and pop my brakes, and I might even just cut my whole. It's kind of fuzzy, huh? Whole electric system. Yeah. Mm. Oh, if you just <laughs> uploaded it, it, probably was might be still processing, the high res version. Uh huh. So that building is Trump Tower? Yeah, Trump International Hotel, um, <laughs> Columbus Circle. And he just leaves, the, he puts yeah. on his hazards and he just yeah. leaves the car there? <laughs> he wanted to park in the front, actually, but oh, God. Uh, there was a car there. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> the audacity of the Yang Gang. Yeah. I love yeah. it. <laughs> well, Ching, 
thank you. you so much for spending a, a little bit of your Friday morning. And, oh, by the way, happy <laughs> happy uh, Thanksgiving to you. Thank you, yeah. thank you. T same to you and uh, I, to I'm your I'm sorry family. you had to to give up some some of your time for editing. I I can't imagine how much time that takes. Cause actually, I stopped doing a lot of uh video on demand stuff oh yeah oh yeah because of the editing it took so yeah. freaking long that yeah. live streaming you know it's kind of the lazy man's content creation right? yeah. yeah yeah oh by the way i don't wanted to shout out for uh uh ethan Wu, who actually mm -hmm. followed me uh like for five months he made a, a, sh a film 20 minutes film on me actually oh wow yeah so it's called Asian. I'll give you a link later. Okay. Cool. It's called Asian American 2020, uh, something like that. Asian Americans. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, yeah. No, uh, editing is so tedious. It's almost unhealthy because I yeah. sit here like hours and yeah, hours to I solve know. little problem. Yeah. I know. It's, yeah. it's, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a passion and it's an art and that's why now when when you watch other people's videos or you watch movies and documentaries you're like wow that that you you appreciate it so much more you know yeah um yeah, definitely. ching is there any any last words any asks or shout outs or calls to action for the audience uh before well, we wrap up yeah i would say um you know let's help out georgia uh, even if you cannot go and um, write postcards or make phone banking or whatever uh, i think it's very important uh, to uh, to to you know getting the seats in the senator so other than that uh, i don't know watch my you know my twitter is chingju and my facebook is chingju too yeah so um Follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and I will let you know when I'm almost done. And um, yeah, I don't mind sharing with you just some people, you know, not with the mass media about this. this yeah. Thing. Well, I, I I really hope that uh, you get it submitted and accepted by some film festival or documentary yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And get some uh, get some more eyes on it, and then for sure. Yeah. Uh, if you wanted to release some little sneak peeks from time yeah. to time uh, to yeah. kind of uh, satisfy the cravings for the gang, I'm <laughs> sure you'll find a way to do that as well. Yeah, I want you, Tom, to help me actually uh, when I'm feeling good enough to present to Andrew Yen, please pass to him because I don't really have direct contact with him. And I think he will be moved by the Okay. People. Well, I'm sure he'll. A lot of us will 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 put it in. Uh, kind of send him a note, and I don't have a. I, don't, I I'm not on first name. You know, I'm not super close to him. But uh, oh no, I, I, I thought you do. <laughs> well, he's been on the show a few times, but yeah. Um, you know, like he's a. Uh, we're not. We're not. Uh, we've never met in person. We're not. Oh, like, okay. Friends, but yeah. But uh, for sure, I will send him a note. Uh, whenever you give me that link to say, hey, yeah. you should check this out. I'm yeah. happy to share it with him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank cool. You. So, so I want that... to thank you. I want to thank you for having me. And oh, I... thank you, Cheng. Well, I it's my pleasure, and uh, I'm just moved by all the work that you and the rest of the Yang Gang has put in, and I hope that we we keep that fire lit because 2024 will be here before we know it. The other thing that I would call out for people is as exciting and and, and historic as the Yang 2020 presidential campaign was if you have a lot of energy for those ideas don't forget that you can also impact your local community at the city the county level where a lot of the things that andrew talked about are very achievable um so as an example uh i'm probably going to be spending a lot more time on uh vocational education um kind of initiatives in my local community Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's hard to get someone into the White House, but um, pushing from the bottom up, from the grassroots up, like can certainly be done uh, in a in a near kind of more achievable amount of time. So hopefully we can think globally, but act locally and uh, and then also keep our powder dry for 2024 and uh, what lies ahead. Right. right. With Thank that, uh, we'll say goodbye, nerds. Goodbye, nerds. I <laughs> love it. Thank you, Ching. <laughs>